Mr. Narayana, we cannot hear you. Mr. Narayana, we cannot hear you. Mr. Narayana, ah, it looks like he lost internet connection because I don't see him among, ah, he is now back. Mr. Narayana? We apologize for technical Hello. issues, but Mr. Narayana, you are back now, yeah? Can you hear us? Mr. Narayana? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. We can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry for the technical problem and uh, uh, I apologize uh, from my side and uh, uh, I welcome all the audience and the panelists for today's uh, webinar series of FIP on understanding and managing headaches in the community, therapeutic approaches and uh, advancements in the Southeast Asian region. And again, next slide, please. Yeah, this, I will be the moderator. I am Dr. TV Narayana, President of Southeast Asian Regional Forum and also National President of Indian Pharmaceutical Association. I did my undergraduate and post-graduation from Andhra University, India, and PhD also from India. And uh, I am working as a director of the Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra Pradesh, uh, India. And uh, I am happy to share, uh, recently has been awarded the FAPA Issue Date Award in Pharmacy Education category. With these few words of my introduction, I will... Uh, go to this uh, webinar in process and i request anikin can you share next slide these are the announcement of uh, fip and uh, uh, previous slide please yeah and uh, the webinar is being recorded uh, and uh, live streamed on youtube this recording will be available on your website at www.events.fip.org. And you may ask the questions using the question box provided. And you are welcome to provide your feedback to webinars at fip.org. And, uh, and become a member of FIP at www.fip.org membership.registration. And, uh, this is to inform all the attendees, uh, the e-certificate will be sent to all the attendees by email after this webinar. And uh, Anikin, next slide, please. And we sincerely thank FIP, would like to thank Sanofi for uh, supporting this uh, online event and making the participation of Professor Godsby possible. Thanks to Sanofi and also thanks to all the attendees. Please share next slide. 
this is uh, today's program and uh, uh, welcome and introduction and a summary of video messages understanding 21st century headaches and uh, their impact their impact by professor godsway and uh, these two are the video messages will be there recorded presentations and uh, afterwards regional approaches to headache self care leading non prescription medicines by dr luminita and uh, pharmacist role in supporting the self care of headache in southeast asian region by dr raj vaidya community pharmacist from india and after that q and a session this q and a session the attendees can use their chat box and uh, uh, the important questions will be taken over and the concerned uh, speaker or panelist will be answering the q and a and <clears throat> if the questions are more the uh, questions will be sent to the panelist by email where the attendees will get the answer by email <clears throat> and wrap up of the session and the learning objectives of this uh, webinar is to provide insights of the therapeutic approaches and advancements used in the management of headaches understanding the role of non prescription medicine as a tool in headache self care identify the role of pharmacist in supporting the self care of headache through a regional lens these are the learning objectives of this webinar next slide please atikin and this is the summary video by professor peter godsway and uh, professor peter godsway is professor of neurology and kings college london and director of nihr welcome trust clinical research facility kings college hospital london he is also a professor of neurology in the department of neurology university of california los angeles he is an honorary consultant neurologist at the hospital for sick children great arman street london and with this few words of introduction about professor godsway now i request anikan to play the video of professor peter godsway hello my name is peter godsway and i'd like to thank the international pharmaceutical federation for asking me to speak at these series of meetings about 21st century headache and the way headache is impacting well-being and quality of life i'm a neurologist and i'm interested in headache disorders one of the realizations of some work i've been doing with colleagues in the last year and a half to two years is that a large number of people perhaps the largest group of people with headache disorders don't actually see doctors and to be simple we've referred to this as non doctor treated headache so on the left if you look at the population of people who actually seek medical care who are treated by doctors about 10% only end up with a neurologist about 20% of patients end up with a primary care doctor however at least 50% of patients with a primary headache disorder self treat this is the non doctor population it varies a little bit between countries and i've been working with colleagues as you can see from the uk france germany brazil japan and australia broadly speaking very clearly the largest group do not see doctors in particular tension type headache is overwhelmingly treated without consulting a physician what is the pharmacist fit in all of this well, migraine itself commonest disabling form of headache has been stable at the at the very top in the top 10 of the leading causes of years lost years lost disability um over the last 30 years what is notable is an increase in analgesic market and an increase in medication overuse headache as you can see from 23rd most common to the 20th most common disorder in 2015 pharmacists have a really important role here in providing advice to patients on the use of over the counter 
medicines for pain management, particularly in headache, and advice about the misuse or overuse of those medicines. We can help patients understand what's happening by helping them collect their own information, helping them keep a record, and using analgesics optimally. Now, from real world data we've collected using the Migraine Buddy app, it's clear that most patients with headache or indeed with migraine will have up to four attacks per month. As you see, the vast majority will have less than two or between two and four in the very smaller group, which come to see headache specialists and uh, neurologists are those that have many more attacks a month. And certainly, our clinics are full of patients with more than 10 attacks per month. Now, patients report in their diaries missed work, social activity, and family time. They report being slower in what they do, slowed up at work. Um, they report difficulties with sleep and difficulties with concentration, impacts in their daily life. For the management of tension type headache and for migraine, it's important to be aware of what's available. And particularly for tension type headache, given most of the management is going to be done outside the physician sphere. We know from the evidence, nice report, uh, review that uh, Ashina and colleagues uh, published this year, that aspirin and acetaminophen, in parentheses paracetamol, or caffeine combinations or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are the top options for the treatment of an attack of tension type headache. For prevention, lifestyle modification, acupuncture has a role, and tricyclics such as amitriptyline, other medicines, metazapine, venlafaxine, as preventives if they need to go on and see a physician. You'll see the distribution is rather similar throughout the world with about 85%, 86% of patients all over using a non-steroidal, about 70% paracetamol, acetaminophen, and about 50% aspirin, with a little bit of regional variation. Remarkably, in the 21st century, of those with a primary headache disorder, 50% self-treat, and only 20% see a primary care physician. Remember that migraine is the most commoning, dis common disabling primary headache disorder. Lifestyle things are important. Sleep disturbance facilitates headache and often can be associated with cognitive dysfunction. We're obtaining robust real world evidence from e-diaries, population based. Most of the patients in these diaries have less than four attacks a month. And thus primary headache disorders can often be well managed by pharmacist. There's an enormous amount of good to be done. I'd encourage you all to do it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the wonderful presentation of Peter Gertzbey. He briefed us about the pharmacist role in management of the migraine and the patient education and medicine used as preventives. And 21st century headaches and 50% of self-care and primary headaches, disorders. Wonderful presentation. Thank you for your wonderful video presentation, Peter Gartspe. Now, uh, I request uh, Aniken to give the video presentation by Professor Takio Komamanto. And Professor Takio Komamanto, is a professor in the Department of Synthetic Organic Chemistry, Graduate School of Biomedical and Health Sciences, Hiroshima University, Japan. He was a professor in the Department of Pharmacy, um, Masashino University, Japan, between 2010 and 2017. He was previously the chair of FIP Board of Pharmaceutical Sciences, BPS, Special Interest Group on Drug Design and Discovery. He is currently uh, the chair of the FIP Special Interest Group on New Medicines. Uh, and he became a fellow of FIP in the year 2017. 
Now I request Anikan to give the video presentation of Professor Takio Amamento. Hello everyone. I am Takuya Kumamoto from FIP BPS New Medicine Seek and Hiroshima, Hiroshima University, Japan. Today, I will talk about therapeutic approaches and advancement in headache management. According to the International Classification of the Headache Disorder, migraine and attention type headache, a main part of the 21st century headache, were recognized into primary, he uh, primary headaches, which caused by their headaches by them themselves. Other headaches associated with other factors, such as injury, uh, vascular or non-vascular disorder, infections, uh, other medicines and its withdrawal are categorized into the secondary headaches. Usually, the secondary headaches become an emergent case, and if you can observe the patient with a sudden and usual headaches or a high fever or a change of their mind states, immediate consultation of the doctor will be recommended. Here lists the, uh, the medicine used for the headaches, including prescribed medicines. The list of the, some, and some information in this talk were collected from the guideline of the chronic headaches published by Japanese Society of Neurology and Japanese Headache Society and translated in English and published on the web. For prevention use, the uh, calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, S inhibitor, ARB, anti-epilepsy, and antidepressant are used. For the acute therapy, NSAIDs, acetaminophen, ergotamine, and anti-emetics are used. Triptans uh, are also used for the acute therapy. Uh, the chemical structure is related to the serotonin, and its mode of action was at first assumed to cover the shortage of serotonin. However, uh, recent research suggests that triptan works to binding its receptor on the trigeminal nerve uh, con to control the release of the neuropeptide. Safety of the triptans was suspected for the patient with cardiovascular risk factors because of the vasoconstriction activity. Towards this issue, uh, recently, new type of the selective serotonin 1F uh, receptor agonist were approved. As shown in chemical structure, it was different structure from those of serotonin or triptans. And so uh, the, the selectivity is expected on the, its vasoconstrictions. Regarding the uh, neuropeptide named CGRP, it was reported to be released from trigeminal nerve and to bind CGRP receptors on the brain gland vessels to induce the neurologic inflammatory developing to the migraine. Towards this issue, CGRP itself and its receptor become target of the drug discovery and their monoclonal antibody uh, binds to, which binds to CGRP itself and the CGRP receptor were developed to inhibit the function of CGRP, and uh, they are recently approved for the acute and prevention use. Small molecular CGRP receptor antagonists, uh, so called JEPANs, were also approved for the uh, acute therapy. For the treatment of the tension type headache, NSAIDs caffeine, antidepressant, and muscle reluctants are used. For OTC, uh, single drugs of the acetaminophen, NSAIDs such as aspirin like ibuprofen are used. Proxoprofen is approved as OTC in Japan. As a combination product, aspirin, acetaminophen, or both combined with caffeine or sedative drugs are used. Uh, as, as a type, combination of isopropyl antipyrin, acetaminophen, antihydrous caffeine, and uh, isopropyl acetyl urea is also used in Japan. 
in several countries such as UK and Germany, some triptans were approved as OTC. The problem with OTC access to triptan is overuse. Pharmacists can should warn and advise the patient to use a triptan on less than uh, 10 days per month. For natural herbal medicines, Kampo medicines are approved as OTC in Japan. Some of them would be used for the headache, for example, Kakkonto, Koshiuto, and Goreisan. For the preparation of this talk, I will discuss with uh, community pharmacists in the case of the headache patient visit pharmacy. One pharmacist pointed out the headaches are most uh, more common in women, so it is recommended to think about the balance of the hormone change for their scheduling because headaches may vary depending on their menstrual cycle. Also recommended to pay attention uh, to the weather change uh, because its change in the atmospheric pressure uh, can affect to their headaches. As a pharmacist pointed out, the patient who are buying ibuprofen OTC, even though NSAIDs has been prescribed, and the other patient prescribed NSAIDs from multiple medical institutions. Most of them seems not aware uh, of the relationship between headache and their lifestyle, for example, as possible trigger for the headaches like lights, smells, smoke, sleep, alcohol, and exercise. Pharmacists can support uh, such a patient by asking their lifestyle in the timing and the strength of the, the headaches attack to improve the lifestyle and reduce the number of the medications. And it is also pointed out if they are taking the medicine more than 10 days per month, medicine over is the headache would be suspected. As an example of the short-term interview of the headaches, uh, screening the questionnaire forms are useful, such as three question headache screening, uh, uh, ID migraine screening, MIDAS instruments, H6, and HALT index. It is valuable to collect the information with a limited number of the questions. And it is not might be a special method, but the other method can be used for the interview form, consists with the following seven questions. Uh, with location, quality and quantity, timing and setting, factor, associated manifestations, and additional lifestyle and drug, uh, drug history. For example, a patient has tightened pain at the back of the head, uh, which continued uh, from one year before and occurred per, uh, once per month, and this time from today's afternoon, and getting long-term working PC uh, strength and the evening, and weakened uh, by the rest. By the rest, in this case, it can be from the tension type of headache. As the other patient claims severe headaches in whole head, uh, catching a cold three days ago and getting worse from the last night. And it was with a simple training of the head and the cough associated with high fever, uh, chill, and nausea. In this case, uh, headaches by the infection should be suspected. Headache diary can support the patient for the recording their uh, headache attacks, symptoms, and the treatment. It can help doctors to make a diagnosis, and pharmacists can use for the advice. Patients themselves can recognize triggers or warning signs, uh, assess whether their acute and preventive medication is working, and show any, uh, show any patterns of attack. Regarding to the, uh, the weather-associated headaches, what weather can be triggered such as change of the humidity and temperature, storms, extremely dry conditions, and dust environments? For the management of these kinds of headaches, 
This is to like a smartphone application to inform the weather forecast can be applicable to avoid such headaches in advance. As a possible medications, analgesics can be used and the compound medicines can be used as OTC in Japan, for example, with Goraisan. As take home messages, several prescribed medicines and OTC are effective for the treatment, acute prevention, acute or prevention for the migraine uh, and tension type of headache. A approval of a new, recently developed tryptan derivative and the CZRP related medicines increase the choice of the treatment of the headaches. Pharmacists can support the patient to reflect their lifestyle relating to the headache, which can lead to the improvement of their lifestyle and the reduction of the medications. Utilization of headache diary and the digital tool for the weather associated headaches will be also effective to manage their headache. Anything you overuse the headaches can be suspected when the patient take headache medication over 10 days uh, for three months. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, thank you. Professor, for the wonderful presentation, and uh, you have briefed the attendees with the international classification of headaches, that is uh, SCDH3 disorder, medication of headaches, including prescribed medicines, and migraine prophylaxis, acute, and the drugs used, and the receptors, how the drug is acting and relieving the management of headache and the clinical practice guidelines for chronic headache by Japanese Society of Neurology and Japanese Headache Society. And also you highlighted about the OTC for headaches and the products and the combination products and the products uh, used alone, in alone and also combination. And uh, the products used in UK and Germany, other countries, tryptons used and overuse of these, and what is the role of the pharmacist in uh, controlling this headache. And compo medicines used as what is in Japan. And uh, finally, you have briefed us with the patients visit the pharmacy and pharmacist support in medication based on the lifestyle. Examples of screening and questionnaires for headache patients. And the formula, the method LQQ2ESFA with the case studies one and case studies two wonderfully highlighted, briefed the role of pharmacist. And finally, the headache diary for both the doctors for diagnosis and pharmacist for prescribing will support the pharmacist. And uh, all this weather associated headaches also you briefed and finally have given the take home messages and how <clears throat> a pharmacist can support the patient and what is the management of this uh, headache and excellent presentation thank you very much and <clears throat> now i have the honor of inviting our next speaker dr luminita constantin dr luminita constantin holds a bachelor degree as a medical doctor emf carol de villa Bucharest, Romania, and a certification in medicine development, IFAPP Academy, King's College, London, UK, with over 25 years experience in pharmaceutical industry, working in multinational and multicultural companies, cross-functional, global. She is a medical affairs professional at Sanofi, promoting safer and appropriate drug use, enhancing healthcare professionals' ability to make appropriate decisions in partnership with patients, customers, and been bringing the voice of the patient into business innovation with medical insights, and also aiming to optimize experiences and outcomes for patients and healthcare professionals. With these few words of introduction, I invite uh, our speaker, Dr. Luminita Constantin, on regional approaches to headaches at leading non prescription medicines. I welcome you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Narayana. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I do see participants from all time zones. So I want to greet you. Um, 
as going to the next slide, uh, and as it was shared, for Southeast Asia region, um, um, we can see the self-treatment versus professional healthcare, and acknowledging that worldwide, 50% of people with headache are estimated to be primarily self-treated without contact with healthcare professional, so with contact direct with you, uh, except the pharmacies. For Southeastern um, Asian region, these figures are similar with the uh, global one, uh, with a high level of primary care physician up to 30%, but low addressability to specialists, to neurologists, um, uh, up to 5%. In the next slide, we can we will debate uh, we will discuss about the prevalence of headache disorders, and um, here we can say that at the turn of the century, most of the world population lived in region where prevalent of the headache was unknown, and its impact was poorly understood. Global burden of headache, an update 2018 update of the World Headache Atlas performed by Lifting the Burden, a non-profit organization in official relation with World Health Organization was working to scale this unknown burden. Based on a program of population-based studies performing countries for all world regions, they have demonstrated a high prevalence of headache disorders, including migraine, tension type headache, medication overuse headache, and their association with impaired quality of life, substantial loss of productivity, and high economic cost in every country surveyed. For Southeast Asia region, two population-based studies with standardized method methodology in both countries. The major difference, if all headache, migraine, tension type, the percentages of prevalence, it's almost um, similar. The main difference was in headache over uh, more and over 15 days per month, much more prevalent in Nepal uh, than in India, similar with uh, possible medication overuse headache. Going to the uh, next slide, uh, we will look at the uh, impact and loss of the productive time. And as might be expected, headache disorders are um, uh, were generally associated with impaired quality of life and across all countries, and also impact on uh, productivity from paid work and from household work. Meaning that Spain, it's not only um, impacting our life, but also functionality. So the societal impact was consequently high. The burden of indirect cost attributable mostly uh, to loss productivity was around 1.7 loss of, of GDP in India with no data from, uh, from, uh, from Nepal. In India, as in Europe, the personal impact of headache was high in other respects with 10 to 12 of participants reporting a lack of understanding among friends, family, employers, and colleagues. And uh, from six to 12% reporting negative impact on their educational attainment, earning potentials, and careers. In Nepal, people with headache of all types reported impairment of quality of life, which was greatest among those with possible medication overuse headache. Anxiety and depression were both associated with possible medication overuse headache and migraine, but low with TTH. What about the 21 century headache? Let's look to the next slide. And we will see that 21 century headache, it's an expert consensus paper published this year. Experts agreed on the observation that headache now it's occurring earlier in life it's attributed to this modern life and contributing lifestyle, um, uh, modern lifestyle. And there are also some other contributing factors mostly associated with changing lifestyle, such as huge stress, bad posture, physical inactivity, sleep disturbance, poor diet, excess use of digital technology, uh, weather changes, um, um, uh, and uh, many others. COVID-19 lockdown impacted stronger and bring us 
uh, increased screen time, um, uh, increased psychological stress, social isolation, sleep disturbances. So at the crossroad of this lifestyle and triggers, which are quite uh, pressing us, it is 21 century headache, which is not only pain anymore. It's pain plus missing functionality and missing uh, um, cognitive capabilities such as concentration, attention, problem solving, reasoning, perception, coordination, motivation. It creates a state of blur mind and it's an impaired mental clarity in association with reduction of social uh, interaction, absence for work, reduced productivity and work and lifestyle compromise. Going to the next slide, what is the management of the um, uh, tension type headache and migraine? Um, of course, it was already mentioned that uh, uh, there are uh, different approaches near the drugs. And um, um, beside of the uh, patient education and trigger management, uh, we are addressing the symptomatic treatment. And inside of the symptomatic treatment, the main classes of drugs to treat headache disorder are first analgesic, we want to provide pain relief, are antiemetics, for the associated symptoms, um, specific anti-migraine drugs, and prophylactic uh, medications. Management of the tension type headache um, starts, uh, as I said, as I mentioned, with patient education and management of known headache triggers. And symptomatic tre tre uh, treatment is required for mild to severe headaches or when headaches affect function. Non-pharmacological treatment can be used concurrently with pharmacological therapies um, and, uh, or as a standalone therapies. And uh, uh, to look on the right-hand side from the Global Health Atlas for the Southeast Asian region, still global analgesic preferred are NSAIDs in a huge percentage of case, almost 100%, paracetamol and uh, aspirin. What about the next slide, please? What about the headache medication and the COVID pandemic? It was highly debatable. And beside the obvious concern about limitation of virus spread and providing the best possible care to infected patients, a concomitant concern has arisen in view of a possible link between the use of certain drugs such as renin-angiotensin system inhibitors and ibuprofen and increased risk for COVID-19 infection. This study shares this concern in relation to headache treatment and conclude that based on the current evidences, there is no reason to abandon treatment of headache patients with ARS inhibitors or ibuprofen and there is no convincing evidence that either ARS blockers or ibuprofen facilitate or worsen SARS-CoV-2 infection in any type of patients, including headache patients. Going to the next slide, what about the recent development? What happened in the last period in the world? We have noticed that self-management, COVID and e-commerce um, pushed us to a new way of um, um, addressing our uh, medical problem. Uh, quarter one, 2020, sales boost, uh, were boosted by COVID-19 pandemic. And this high level of growth, it was expected to be short life due to the consumer stockpiling of OTC and they prepare for the pandemic. And also pandemic provide a boost to e-commerce. Online spending has risen during the lockdown. The growth was driven by higher dose of NSAIDs, new ingredient combination, fast acting products, smaller pack sites and combination. Although the e-commerce of medicinal products has many uh, benefits for patients and pharmaceutical industry, it still remains a concern for not only for regulatory authorities worldwide, but also for healthcare professionals. Going to the Next slide, um, in order to conclude the 21 century headache and pharmacist uh, perspective on analgesia and OTC analgesia. I will take a phrase which was stated by Professor Godsby that primary headache disorders can often be well managed by the pharmacist. 
and pharmacies played an important role in pain management by assisting patients and prescribers with the selection of the, the counter analgesic. A pharmacy may be the last healthcare professional a patient or a consumer sees before utilizing an OTC product. Patients often ask for advice when selecting an OTC analgesic. Therefore, it is important for the pharmacies to know what question to ask to a patient to help ensure that informed recommendations are made. The following key considerations can help pharmacies support each and any patient in selecting and safely using an appropriate OTC analgesic. I know when you, we have hundreds or tens of patients in a line waiting to, to take their prescription, it's not an easy, um, an easy task or an easy challenge. Still, the right question with the right patient can improve and make a step forward in better treating them. So if we have time assessing a patient characteristic and medical history, explaining the recommendation, ensure that the patients understand the recommendation and it was individualized, make a step forward to be closer to the patients. At the end, I want to, to conclude with a quote uh, 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 made by the pharmacist Robert Barkin, who said, we have a world of generic drugs, but no generic patients. So every patient requires specific considerations and an individualized recommendation. And for 21 century headache, this advice is still standing strong. Thank you very much for your attention and for listening and looking forward for your question. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lominita, for the wonderful presentation. And you have given the uh, prevalence of headache disorders uh, in two major countries, India and Nepal, and the factors that lack of understanding and financial constraints you brief nicely. And also you have given the statistical data of nearly 50% of people are on self-care in management of this headache in C region. And she highlighted about the 21st century headache, uh, the lifestyle, COVID-19 and negative impact and impaired mental clarity association. And also the management of tension type headache at migraine and uh, patient education and trigger management, the role. And uh, also briefed about the non-pharmacological prophylaxis treatment like acupressure, lifestyle management, etc. And briefed about the recent developments, how the people are using self-management and COVID and e-commerce and the online rise in the sales and also the spending of the patients. And 21st century headache and pharmacist perspective on OTC analgesia briefly, uh, nicely given the presentation. And I'm impressed with the quote, in the world there are generic drugs, but there is no generic patients. So wonderfully uh, given a quote and uh, at the end of the presentation. Thank you, Dr. Luminita for the wonderful presentation. And I request the attendees to give the questions, if any, in the, QA in chat box so that we will attend at the end of the session. Now, I have the honor of inviting the next speaker, Dr. Raj Vaidya from India. Dr. Raj is the chief pharmacist and a partner at family owned community pharmacy, Hindu pharmacy at Panaji Goa. He has 32 years of experience in community pharmacy and its development in India also. He sits as an observer on the executive committee of the FIP community pharmacy section. He is the immediate past vice president and chairperson, community pharmacy division of Indian Pharmaceutical Association for the term 2006 to 2012. He was the project leader for pilot project on accreditation of pharmacies in India with, uh, in collaboration with Indian Pharmaceutical Association and uh, Drug Control General of India and WHO India Country Office. And he also served as project leader for project on good pharmacy practice, IPA in collaboration with the DCG and WHO India of Country Office. A major contributor towards writing of GPP training manual for community retail pharmacists and a resource person for training workshops for pharmacists. He is currently the editor of Indian Pharmaceutical Association Community Pharmacy Divisions E-Times. 
He is also heading our advocacy group of Indian Pharmaceutical Association and representing government and other vital organizations on various issues pertaining to the pharmacist and pharmacist profession. I, uh, I have the honor to invite Dr. Raj Vaidya to give his presentation on pharmacist role in supporting the self-care of headache in Southeast Asian region. It is now I welcome you, Dr. Raj Vaidya. Thank you, Dr. Narayana. Thank you for the kind introduction. And I also thank the FIP and Sanofi for giving an opportunity to me to share my views on the pharmacist role in the Southeast Asia region. I would particularly be focusing on India. Now, even though the global burden of disease study 2016 estimates a high burden for migraine and headache. However, as per uh, various studies conducted, especially by quote from the review article, there is limited data available in India to support such a high burden. Of course, it is necessary to have more studies and studies also indicate the high diagnostic and treatment gaps for headache disorders in India. The major, major challenge is seen in addressing headache disorders is uh, one of them is low perceived severity by the patients, absence of burden data and lack of standard treatment protocols for headache disorders. And of course, the lack of primary care models for neurological disorders in the developing country context. In the next slide, as we can see, the same popular medicines are also available in India without a prescription. That's paracetamol 500 and 650 milligrams. The latter being more specifically stressed upon for headaches and body aches and aspirin. And we have fixed dose combinations of paracetamol with propenazone and caffeine. And all of these are very largely advertised and very popular amongst the people. And as we can see, a lot of self-medication happens based on this. In the next slide. India has a rich tradition of Ayurveda and herbs and uh, traditional home remedies. So coming down from that, and uh, it has come down and passed on into families and generations together. Of course, India is a vast country and which culturally and several regions have their own uh, regional differences in making traditional home remedies. So these consist of uh, various concoctions and teas, application of pastes or oils on the forehead and inhalation of essential oils from herbs. Of course, because of the pill popping culture, these traditional use home remedies are reducing but the knowledge is reducing, but of course, a lot of my information is available on social media. Next, please. So there are various local applications also very popular amongst uh, people in the country for using in headache and migraine. And these are in terms of balms or ointments or uh, roll-ons. And they are widely advertised and relatively low on cost. They contain mixtures of either of camphor, methyl salicylate, or extracts of these, or mint and eucalyptus oil. And they are available widely, and you don't need a drug license to sell Ayurvedic medicines. So they are also available at non drug stores. Next one, please. So a quick Google search, like I've just shown you here, will give you a whole lot of uh, oral products in, in the Ayurvedic sector. So many of them are uh, promoted for migraine. But one point to be noted is that Ayurveda looks at the whole body, but these products over here are combinations of various herbs. So they are not individual specific, but at the same time, they are promoted OTC or through advertisement. So it's not that everybody would get a treatment or a cure because of these drugs. Next. Similarly, as we can see, uh, one slide before that, please. Yes. Even in homeopathy, 
there are wide range of products available combination products available for headache migraine as i've shown you through this google search but again homeopathy also does not believe in uh, also believes in individual specific treatments so these medications may or may not work in everybody next next slide please yes the homeopathic treatments going by the principles of homeopathy involve careful history taking by a qualified homeopathic doctor and choosing specific medicines based on these principles but many times patients are hesitant to go to homeopathy ayurvedic for that matter any other doctor because they may not consider headache as as serious an issue at the same time they will go when certain usual medicines are not working on them next similarly ayurvedic medicines were prescribed through the ayurvedic doctor could include a combination of oral medications they would also recommend dietary and lifestyle changes uh, yoga and medica- meditation and panchakarma therapy next so panchakarma therapy is more or less something which is meant to detoxify the body it is used for different ailments so in terms of uh, migraine it is considered to remove the toxins which are causing migraine so this could uh, involve doing a lot of different therapies which would include body massage with oils steaming consumption of medicated ghee and putting medicated nose oil in the nose now these are all done under supervision of a ayurvedic physician next one of the next one please uh, one of the parts of the panchakarma are putting medicated oil on the forehead and here as you can see it is used from a vessel medicated oil is poured again this is done by an ayurvedic physician under supervision so they are promoted for headache migraine and stress and difficulty in sleeping next now coming back the various prescription medicines which are available in the country uh, paracetamol in combination with caffeine ergotamine procrotazine and also metoclopramide now even though they are strictly by law prescription medications they are also used by people on their own or sometimes the doctor has prescribed them and they repeat them or sometimes they also share the information with others who also tend to use these medications the next slide which show that ncts are also very popular but all of these ncts they are prescription medicine so even though 200 mg of ibuprofen would be otc in many of the countries in our country all of them are prescription medicines and uh, various ncts are available these are the ones commonly used for uh, headaches and many times these are available as fixed dose combinations with paracetamol or with domperidol and here again even though they are strictly prescription medicines people use them a lot many times they are available without prescription so people tend to use and maybe misuse them as is uh, overuse them also next also available are the triptans and these are the three triptans which are available on in the country these are prescription medicines these are little higher on cost and these are specifically under the doctor's supervision these are used sometimes there could be cases where if, uh, patients may tend to use them uh, more frequently so that's where the role of the pharmacist comes the codeine and combinations are not generally recommended for migraine luckily they are not so well promoted in our country and it's strictly a schedule h1 drug so there is more control on that next now in india the otc medicine labels there is no strict rule that they should carry the complete information which would make the patient useful for the patient to make responsible choices for self medication so also the package inserts whether it's for otc medicines or prescription medicines these are also not mandatory and not quite often found so the patient is uh, left to choose the medicines based on the information provided by the doctor and whatever information the pharmacist can give and of course then patients do tend to use the internet to search and self medicate not always in the right manner next 
So there are a lot of challenges for the pharmacists. One is obviously, as was said by Dr. Luminita, is a lack of time. But people also perceive them as busy, and many of the many of the places are crowded, and it's difficult to spare time. But at the same time, it is important that pharmacists do make time for their patients. So a lot of products for are advertised for headache, and so there is a lot of self medication. The patients also do not always buy from the same pharmacy. And one reason is also that medicines are out of pocket. Then the patient pharmacists are not. There are no electronic health records, so pharmacists don't have access to patient medication records. And pharmacists don't have exposure or expertise to the different other systems of medicine, which I showed you, Ayurveda, homeopathy. And uh, patients often are hesitant to see the doctor unless it's very bad, and so they expect the pharmacist to do the treatment for the uh, patient or the headache or the migraine. Next. So, what role do I envisage for the community pharmacist? One is when recommending or OTC medicines for headaches, need to ask the right questions, need to find out what remedies are already being taken, what is the right diagnosis that a pharmacist can make, should be able to distinguish between the different types of headaches. Also draw the line and not to medicate by himself and draw the line and refer to the doctor and also look out for the red flags. It is important that pharmacists need to be better equipped. Next slide. So the pharmacist also, it is important that pharmacists suggest non-pharmacological measures and, and also to help choose the right non-prescription medications in consultation or in sharing with the patients and also guide on the correct use, the dosage and the maximum dosage and also the adverse drug reaction. So pharmacists need to be better equipped in doing all these things. Next. So when when patients come and ask for medication by name, especially the prescription medicines or come with their prescriptions, the pharmacists have to be alert for repeat buys so that there is no overuse of non-prescription or prescription medicines for headache, migraine. And also check out how often they are being used, guide the patients on the medications, the cautions and the adverse drug reactions. And also similarly decide when to refer to the patient. Also look out for trigger factors and guide the patient on trigger factors for migraine or headache. And also as suggested, the headache diary to be maintained by the patients. So pharmacists also need to be better equipped in this and the best way to do it, as we can see in the next slide, is uh, one is by promoting non-pharmacological measures. The next, I won't repeat that. So pharmacists need to be given more attention in the curriculum. Headache disorders need more focus. It also be needs to be taught through case studies and simulated exercise, both at the college level as well as for practicing pharmacists. Continuing professional development programs are very important. They need to be focused also on headaches and migraines and modules and written materials for pharmacists. As well as one point is that pharmacy support staff also need to be given some training because they also handle a lot of walk-in customers. Next. And that's my last slide. It is important to create awareness amongst the public and patients about the headache disorders and the role of the pharmacist. And then the pharmacist is available to provide information, care, and guidance. So something like awareness, uh, migraine and headache awareness month, posters or social media messages, information leaflets on headache disorders, as well as creating package inserts so that patients can be given information and warnings or cautions in dealing with their headache or migraine problems. I'll stop there. Thank you very much for the opportunity and thank you for listening. Thank you, Dr. Rajvajja, for the wonderful presentation of uh, Indian scenario. And uh, you have briefed about the headache disorders, what are the gaps in India? and the major challenges in addressing the headache disorders, and what are the medicines available in India, that is OTC products, paracetamol, and its combinations, ergotamine, caffeine, and fixed dose combinations. And uh, you stressed upon the Ayurvedic products also promoted for migraine. 
and not individual specific treatment though they are generalized uh, products used in treatment of migraine and homeopathic products and uh, interestingly panchakarma therapy that is the traditional treatment still practicing in a country like india shirodara and the prescription medicines so usage of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs ibuprofen diclofenac nimsulide and finally you have briefed the challenges of the pharmacist in india what are the challenges and you have given the recommendations the role of community pharmacist in medication of headache including non pharmacological measures treatment and also you have given the advice of the pharmacists in india need to be trained during their studies or ug or pg curriculum and uh, finally you have suggested to have the awareness programs definitely it will be very much useful uh, for uh, ipa to have a awareness program during our national funds week this we can take it as a one of the agenda thanks for guiding us and uh, once again thank you for the wonderful presentation uh, thank you uh, i all the speakers uh, i thank you all for the wonderful presentation now ankit i request you to go to the next slide if any questions please use the q and a tool i think i have three questions here and uh, uh, the question one is by cherry jamalin nikomal i request all the panelists to switch on their cameras and be available and unmute does coffee can be associated as a cause of an extreme headache do you advise to a person suffering from this should abstain to drink it more often i think uh, dr luminita may be able to answer this i will try to yes thank you very much for this uh, yes we know uh, there are countries where the uh, caffeine consumption can be around 2 3 cups 200 300 mg per day be mindful that coffee drink and it's not a synthesized compound as the caffeine in the drugs we are monitoring and we know exactly uh, the composition so of course there is a vicious circles this can be correlated so the coffee we are drinking plus the caffeine combination products uh, we are taking can uh, bring nervousness nausea uh, insomnia uh, uh, there are complex mechanisms which are there which can at the end uh, dizziness uh, which can also include headache so when treating a uh, headache patients which drink a lot of coffee or caffeinated product we need to consider also that in this combination the dosage can be um, of caffeine as a co-analgesic product with facilitate the analgesic either paracetamol either uh, NSAIDs or other um, uh, aspirin to act quicker and to perform a a a quicker uh, pain relief we really need to to balance and to see uh, how much caffeine it is ingested by the person in a day i hope i answer to your question and for yeah. the second question i try to answer directly in a uh, in a uh, in a um, i type the answer since we run out of time and uh, <laughs> yeah uh, i think i request the audience uh, to send the questions by mail and the questions will be sent to the mail to the concerned panelists and uh, it will be answered by mail also so anikan can we go to the next session next slide please yeah so finally we'll wrap up and conclude this session and uh, i thank uh, fip and uh, sanofi for uh, giving the wonderful presentation on uh, need of the day that is understanding and managing headaches in the community the therapeutic approaches and advancements in the southeast asian region and i thank uh, peter godspey and professor takmiya kumamato for the excellent video presentation followed by the presentation of the speakers dr luminita 
uh, from Sanofi and uh, Dr. Ajwaija. I thank all the attendees and uh, I thank the Sanofi for uh, uh, supporting this event. And uh, the panelists have clearly given the role and responsibilities of the pharmacists and what do and not to do and self-treatment and professional health care and also the headache disorders and the challenges and what are the challenges of pharmacists and what are the recommendations to the community pharmacists. Definitely some of the things will be very much useful to the attendees. And I request Anikin to go to the next slide, please. And uh, this is about the World Pharmacist Day, 25th of September. And uh, uh, FIP, everybody is aware, FIP has given uh, uh, the 25th September is the World Pharmacist Day, and um, millions of pharmacists are going to celebrate this event throughout the world. And uh, I request everybody to participate in a big way and make it a grand success. The theme of uh, this uh, year's World Pharmacist Day, there's a pharmacy, a trusted professional, that is what we are witnessing during this COVID-19 pandemic in some countries, developing countries like India and all, the pharmacist services and pharmacist role has been recognized during this COVID-19 pandemic. Definitely it suits well to this type of uh, uh, developing countries. And uh, I request everybody to participate, all the awareness programs, whatever the programs in your particular area, region and country at uh, regional level, national level, and international level and make it a grand success. And happy World Pharmacist Day in advance to all of you, all the panelists and all the uh, our attendees. And uh, you can, uh, this uh, recording is available at uh, events.fip.org and uh, this is the part of the FIP digital events. And thanks to FIP for giving the wonderful events in series. Please, uh, next slide please. And thank you, uh, all of you, for your uh, attending this seminar. And I personally thank uh, the Peter Godsway and uh, Dr. Mato and the panelists, Dr. Luminato and Dr. Rajvajja and uh, Anikin for the one and Mila for the wonderful support from FIP. Uh, have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you.